the dauntless. She walked up to the humorless, emotionless guards and presented the data slate that has the official documentation. When Lady Tikanped outright told her to work with a human demolition specialist and had called her husband to arrange it, she had been uncertain and nervous. It was her personal opinion on the humans that made this uncomfortable. She's then waved in and the data slate is handed back. She moves past the two emotionless beings and pauses as she hears a struggle and sees one of the guards grabbing at what appears to be empty air. There's a smile on his face as he exerts himself against what she can sense as a cloaken, the invisible subspecies, and then gets a good grip before spinning to build momentum and hurling the woman away. Both of them are still utterly without emotion as they share a laugh and slap their hands together in seeming celebration and then go back to their duties. A scuffle and a shared companionship and there's nothing, nothing at all. It's as empty as a hollow show, just images on the screen, but real and in reach. They're hollow. Is there a problem, ma'am? One of them asks and she shakes her head. Just head down the hallway. The specialist will be waiting for you in chamber 27A. The guardsman says to her, and she nods before backing away and then turning, not to run, but to get some distance between the two of them at least. She quickly finds chamber 27A and enters to find another human there. Short, curly hair, and if not for the sheer lack of axiom presence and sheer muscles outlined by his shirt, she would swear she was looking at a normal tret. In a somewhat bare sitting room with a few wall consoles, this one is out of uniform for some reason. Ah, good. You must be Officer Linda Score. I'm Specialist Chank Barnabas, Demolitions and Sabotage. I've also been earning accreditation as a forensic inspector in my off time, he says holding out a hand to her. There's a smile on his face, but it's only as real as a picture on a wall, flat, false, hollow. I see, she says, stepping around his hand and ignoring the scent in the air that's warring with her caution. The slight heady feeling and the uncomfortable warmth that flows through her. If she was dealing with anything other than some kind of walking corpse, it would be heady and beautiful, but with the nothingness in front of her, it's terrifying. Her instincts at war with each other. Right, anyways. I was told that a chemical explosive is suspected in the blast that damaged the council building. I'm one of the better qualified people for helping you out and seeing as how I had no other duties beyond basic boots on the ground guard detail I was freed up to help you. May I see the readouts and scans of the damaged area? She hands the data pad to him and he gives her an odd look. She seeks out to try and find something anything in the axiom and there's at most a slight waver in the natural flows near his left shoulder. That's it, that's all. He lives, but the life of the universe isn't part of him. Even machines have the spark. He browses through it, making a few noises of curiosity as he looks through and glancing up at her now and again before stopping entirely and looking her straight in the eyes. You're on the edge of panic. The hell is going on? As he turns, the distortion turns with him, and that's all that the axiom shifts. He's completely separate from it. She backs away a step, fumbling for the holy circles hanging around her neck. Perhaps it will ward him back. Do you need a minute? He asks, as she thumbs at the necklace to make it very physically apparent. How are you alive? She blurts out, and he blinks in confusion before sighing. Oh, you're one of those types. Hang on a second. This doesn't come natural to me, he says, before leaning back and closing his eyes. It's like a plasma cannon unleashing a spray of purest heat and fire. Hunger, lust, anger, exasperation, curiosity, concern, resignation, frustration, doubt, hope, despair, joy, hate. There are murderous impulses and damn near chains of an iron will nearly physically manifesting in the axiom around him. He's gone from emptiness into a rapturous storm of emotions bleeding into the axiom, a living storm of self and will. Then it's gone and he's empty again. She gapes at him in shock. Are you even sane? 
How can you feel so much at once? How can you feel so little? This is my normal, and it's a good thing that humans don't automatically hook into the axiom. Otherwise, that confusing mess would be on display for everyone to see. How? Are you just not in control of your mind? No, I'm not. The human brain is built different. It's not all one big piece. Without axiom to help in evolution, you build brains up slowly into more and more sophisticated things, always keeping the traits it had as a lesser mind. Chenk explains before turning and then running a guiding finger along the side of his head. The further back in the brain you go, the more simple it becomes, but the more important the functions. Reason thought and higher learning is at the front, but the back controls heartbeat and digestion. Oh, that, that's weird, she says, and he shrugs. We come from a weird part of the galaxy. Unfortunately, due to the way our brains work, when we put our emotions into the axiom to let you see what we feel then everything. And I do mean everything goes out with it. Even the most primitive and basic things that we actively ignore and do not let control our day to day. So that anger, lust, hunger, and all the rest? The animal brain under the thinking one. Its main concerns are staying alive, staying in control, protecting the tribe and reproducing which can be really confusing to other beings, he says before shrugging. What's the distortion around your left shoulder? A concealed Axiom brand. It's effectively armor and little else. It protects against most conventional weapons and the ways people get around it, except kinetic, mostly because kinetic defenses shield both ways most of the time. He explains before jerking his neck to the side a bit in a way that causes popping, snapping sounds. Anyways, now that we've cleared the air, are you willing to work with me a bit more? Uh, yes. Sorry, it's just... A lot of people out here rely almost entirely on Axiom to sense things. That humans don't is confusing and probably pretty scary. Yes. Good because our courier passed by a chemical scanner at one point. This is a chemical explosive and one both powerful and fairly easy to make, especially with Axiom Tech. We call it Semtex. Very reliable and easily made, it's pretty much stable until a blasting cap is introduced. So this is the warning for human explosives? She asks, looking at the chemical readout. Exactly. Our explosives are a result of chemical reactions. This one is an older style of explosive that fell out of style because it's very popular with political dissidents and terrorist attacks. How appropriate. Indeed, Semtex is what we call a plastic explosive. We have solid explosives. We have liquid explosives. But a plastic is a malleable solid that can be easily molded into a variety of shapes. This one is also known for having a higher thermal tolerance, being stable at higher temperatures, and it can still detonate underwater. Its main use has been in demolitions and mining, but as I said before, it's lost a lot of popularity due to criminal actions. Anything else? This is definitely someone that copied our notes on explosives without understanding them, and not someone who figured it out on their own. See this part of the chemical readout? We call that DMDNB. It has nothing to do with stabilizing the compound, adding to its explosive force or anything like that. It's a legal requirement back on Earth as a response to terrorist use. It makes it easier to find in case of a bomb threat. So by leaving it in, by leaving it in, they've told us a little about themselves. They do not have education in chemical sciences, as they would have looked through the compound list and noticed that all that DMDNB does is make it stink. So it can be found without chemical scanners. Not that it will help much. Chemical scanners are very easy to find and purchase. Even handheld versions can be bought and sold as novelty toys. Yes, but they lose effectiveness over a distance. Still, knowing about this stuff will make it much easier to manage and find. Hopefully, a lot of lives can easily be lost when some lunatic plays with Semtex. Anything else about it? Reddish to reddish-orange in coloration. It requires a blasting cap, as I said. 
Remove the cap to disable the explosive, but that's more an emergency thing to do. It's generally unwise to mess with live munitions. He says as he taps out a few things and brings out his communicator to transfer some information. There's something business-like to him now, now that she knows he's not lying in wait but sparing her from the storm that is his passions he seems more, so much more now. So how powerful is this compound? How much do you think was used, she asks, to distract herself from the growing warmth and to keep on track? I'm not sure. I don't know how much of the package was casing, but I don't think more than a few kilograms were used. Semtex is powerful stuff, not to be toyed with. One of its most infamous uses was when 340 grams was used to kill hundreds of people by destroying a commercial air vehicle. This package is fairly large and the damage is fairly widespread. You just need 100 grams to completely gut and destroy an air car. So we had a lot. Relatively, a few kilograms is a lot of boom, but not a lot of mass. This building is at the top of a spire. How much damage was done to the base, to the spire itself? He asks her, and she takes the data pad and goes to the relevant area. Ah, little to no damage to the spire base, but the load-bearing walls surrounding the main chamber are all under suspicion. Those were some of the most reinforced, right? And the blast was off target. It was apparently supposed to go off while in the midst of transportation into the building. So, the target was along the outer edges, or just outside the chamber. The building is a lot of glass and spires going up with nearly flying buttress-style crystals. Damn it, I need to grab an architect to really understand what kind of damage was aimed for. But we can assume the charge was not meant to go off dead center, where some of the most reinforced parts of the building were. Not to mention the very large open area of the council chamber. She reminds him and he nods, which would have bled off the majority of the energy in empty air. The fact that it still compromised the building's structural integrity means the Semtex was well-made, or possibly pre-existing sabotage. What? Well, who's to say? This is a lot of boom, but the building is a stable piece of work for all its fancy adornments. Most of it just trashed the main chamber and sent a shockwave down the halls. It would have caused some damage to the building, but would it be enough to render the building unsafe? That chamber has some of the most powerful supports in the building to both give it a large open area and support the fancy roof above it. The roof hasn't collapsed. There's no outward sign of damage, but that room is near gutted. His face visibly contorts and his eyes narrow as he seems consumed in thought. It's more like watching a drama than dealing with a person, but what if the bomb was to hide something? Something in the building is compromising to someone, and since it went off in the wrong chamber, it might still be in there. That's getting off track. I needed your help to identify the explosive and any details about it. You've given me those. It's Semtex, a human-invented explosive known for its reliability, but it's been modified to make it more easily tracked, which means the formula was either copied without thinking or it came all the way from Earth, she says. And Chank looked shocked before thinking. You think it may have come from the Dauntless. You're the only publicly known users of such weapons. Meaning the prime suspect if anything goes slightly wrong. It would be beyond stupid to use our own explosives to do something like this. Much more reasonable to use a plasma weapon. It's my job to try and see what's going on. Not to play favorites or nice. Thank you for your time, Mr. Barnabas. She says before leaving the room, turning back towards the exit and heading out. She needs to bring what she's learned to the rest of the investigation team. And away from this man before the growing heat makes her jump onto him. She needs to hire a prostitute or something. She's clearly not been late enough if she's falling this fast after meeting a possible suspect no less. She can admit it's not likely, but the nearby gaggle of explosive experts have to be considered when something explodes, 
It's just common sense. You can't rule out a suspect out of hand. You have to be thorough. You have to be smart. 